Well, hi guys, Eugene here from Review Outdoor Gear. We're out here in the woods today doing a little uh, chopping and forest work. And I wanted to talk to you guys today about something that I mentioned in one of my previous videos, which is triangular bandages. So we're, whenever we're outside or backpacking, hiking, forest work especially, I've always got a first aid kit on me. Uh, and there's a review of this specific first aid kit. You can check it out by clicking the link here in the box. And in that video, I mentioned that you must, or you should, my, my recommendation, always have a triangular bandage in here. So today, I brought a couple extras, and I wanted to demonstrate to you how to use these things. So I'm gonna have uh, my brother, Vlad, here in a minute, and I'll show you how to use a triangular bandage. Let me just say that uh, triangular bandages go back a long time. They've been used for a long time in battlefields. I'm not you know, exactly sure of the dates, but they have been used for a long time and they are recognized as a very versatile system of bandaging multiple body parts in multiple different ways and also just as a good soaking, blood soaking sponge or a trauma pad. So I just wanted to show you the different ways you can use it because there are very many, very, very many things you can do with these triangular bandages. And uh, I think knowing how to use it is gonna be a very important tool for you. And having at least one or two, better two, in your first aid kit whenever you're outside, you know, in your car, wherever you have a first aid kit, having a couple of these will be very beneficial. Um, so they're very, very inexpensive. You can get, I got a box of, I think, 12. I have a link down here to Amazon to buy them on Amazon. I got a box of 12 for a very good deal. You can make them yourself as well, but actually, honestly, it's cheaper to buy them than to make them because there's a very specific way to you have to cut the fabric. These have just been cut down perfectly. They're packaged really well and they're not expensive at all. What's very important is that you know how to use it. You know, having something in your first aid kit, like I mentioned in that video that I showed you, uh, that you don't know how to use is gonna be really kind of a useless piece of your kit if you don't know how to use it. So this is just gonna be a video to inform you about all the different usages of a triangular bandage. So in my preparation for using the triangular bandage, I did some research online. I found a lot of good information on there. And specifically, I wanted to just point out this image to you right here. It's gonna pop up on the screen. There's gonna be a link down below for you to look at a more high quality image. But this here, they used to make these triangular bandages with this printed on them. And this shows you just all the different possibilities you have with a triangular bandage. What I wanna say is that, you know, using a triangular bandage is something that you kind of, once you know how it's used, you can really build on it and come up with a bunch of ways to use it. So what I wanna to do today is I'll show you some of the very basic uses of it. So I'll just show you about six or so different ways of using it, and then you can take those ideas and actually build on them and apply it in a lot of different ways. These triangular bandages come in a little Ziploc bag. So that's really nice because that gives you a nice little storage compartment. And also, you know, you can use a Ziploc bag for something else if you ever need to. And it also comes with two clothespins. Now, these are important for a lot of different things that you do with uh, the triangular bandages, and actually most people don't know what these are for, so I'll be showing you what those are for when we get into it. Now, when you get a triangular bandage, you'll notice that it comes wrapped up like this, and there's another name for this. It's a French name. It's called a cravat. So right now it's in the cravat configuration. So of course, see, when I unwrap that, it doesn't look like a triangle, right? Yes, because uh, actually the triangle is wrapped up into a cravat. It comes like this because this is probably the most important usage of this triangular bandage. So if you take the cravat, you can actually unwrap it. But before I do that, I'm gonna show you how to use it the way it is before we do that. So I have Vlad here. So we're gonna pretend that he has a big wound here. Say uh, he got a cut on his arm somehow. Uh, or, you know, he crashed into a tree or, I don't know, something happened and he has a, a wound here. I know that's kind of a very simple example, but the very first usage that you can have right out of the bag with one of these uh, triangular bandages is you just pull it out and you use that as a giant blood sponge. So say this is a really deep cut, there's a lot of blood coming through here. You could just take that and just put it right down and squeeze it down and uh, use that to absorb the blood and stop the bleeding. Now, you're not going to be able to hold that there for too long. so. This is where, you know, having two, two of these is very important. And like I showed you, when I just pull this out and I unwrap it, you have the cravat configuration. So you can just put that right over, over the, uh, the blood sponge there. And then you can begin to wrap it. Now I'm doing this kind of in an awkward way just so you can, you can see it in the video. But you can really crisscross it. 
And then as you get to the top, you have the two edges which become smaller because they're the tips of the triangle. And then you can just tie it off on the corners there. Now when you do this, you wanna make sure that you don't make it too tight so that you don't cut off the circulation. And you also wanna to learn to tie a square knot. So how does that feel, bud? Feels pretty good, pretty snug. Does it feel like there's some pressure on it? Yep. So that's what you want. You want pressure on the wound when you're doing that. So that that's one of the usages. And of course, this is, you know, not a sterile bandage, so you're gonna to wanna to replace it as soon as you can. This is why this is first aid. This is not, you know, last aid. Uh, you, you're trying to stop bleeding is what you're trying to do here and uh, kind of save the person from dying, basically. Um, and this is for a really big wound. So like I mentioned earlier, the skills that I'm showing you here can be applied in a lot of different variations. So I showed you a wound on an arm. That same wound could be on a leg, on a uh, thigh, you know, it could be a shoulder wound. There are different ways of tying in those areas, um, but actually legs and arms are very similar. If it's on a, on a head wound, say that, you know, he got a big scalp wound, and actually scalp wounds are known to bleed a lot. So it could be a very similar type of application to start with. Um, and in these situations, you actually go under the chin, uh, or you could go around the back of the head. You could wrap a couple and do this type of maneuver. Now, this looks ridiculous and uncomfortable, but the point is, uh, once you get the blood stopped, you know, by a lot of uh, good hand pressure on there, you wanna be able to keep it on there and tie it down. So there's just different varieties of, of ways you can tie these things down. But you don't wanna ch choke the person, so never tie anything around the neck. That would be the only place you would never use a triangular bandages around the neck like that. Because um, you want circulation, pressure. you want circulation to the geniusness always. So there we go, that's that part. Now the next one is also what triangular bandages are really known for. And this is a sling. So if somebody gets a clavicle injury, a arm, a broken arm, broken forearm, broken elbow, any of that, you need a sling because it's actually really painful for the person to support their arm. And you don't want to dangle the arm uh, because also that's very, you know, there's a lot of movement with dangling the arm and there's going to be a lot of uh, pooling of blood if the arm is always being dangled and not used. So you want to always put the hand into a this type of position, uh, but you need a sling for that. So this, that's where you will actually take the triangular bandage, you're going to unwrap it. So now you see the actual reason for why it's called the triangular bandage. Um, and like I told you, they're cut in a very specific way. Uh, the the uh, th threads in the bandage actually run like this, so that when it's folded in the cravat configuration, you have a little bit of stretch, and that allows you to kind of have a nice give to it, and it's not it's not um, unstretchable like it would be in this plane. So once you unwrap it, uh, you will actually just go ahead and put it down like this. You'll put the patient's arm through here. And this bit will go over this side of the neck, okay? What you want right away is you want to tie this in the back. And, you know, this could be on the ground. You might need assistance from a second person to hold the arm up while you're doing this. But once that's tied, yeah, or you, or you can have the patient hold the arm. Okay, now just relax your arm, Vlad, right into there. Actually, Vlad happens to have an injured arm. So then what you want here is you don't want the arm to be falling out the back. You can see that that's not going to work there. So this is where those closed pins that are provided actually come in really, really useful. You bring these together on the back, um, kind of wrap it up like this, put that in there and put the closed pin in there. And how does that feel, lad? Feel pretty, pretty secure? Good. Yeah. So the other thing that sometimes people will do is you want to prevent this type of dangle in the arm um, in this type of situation. So you'd use your second triangular bandage for that. And you know, very simply, you would just carry it around through here and tie it in the back, or you could tie it in the front as well. And that just gives you a nice, uh, and you know, you can make you can make it relatively tight. That gives you a nice secure hold on that there. So that's that's a very classical usage of a triangular bandage, and that's probably one that everybody kind of thinks about when they think of a triangular bandage. Feels pretty good. Comfy, yeah, I can wear this. Yeah, let's untie it here. So another one that's a little bit more difficult to do is actually a shoulder wound. If you know there was a really big deltoid or a, you know back here, a, one, a big wound on the back. Um, actually for this one you have to go across the body. Um, you'd put it down here and you'd go across under here. Does that feel pretty snug on there? Yeah. It's... Does it feel like it's really 
uncomfortable in some no. area. It might be a little bit uncomfortable there with, with time. But no, you it's start... It's not bad. It's pretty wide. Yeah. So, and that's the nice part about this is that it's a really uh, strong bandage that you can really put a lot of tension on here and provide nice pressure uh, for, say, a shoulder there. So again, you just tie that off. So the next one is actually a hand wound. And a hand wound is usually pretty difficult to do. So say that there was a wound here, you know, somebody fell, it damaged this area pretty badly. And what you really want this for is if there's a lot of bleeding, right? Um, you don't want to cover up a wound just to cover it up. You want to do this if you're trying to stop bleeding. So there was a really big bad wound there. We could use one trauma pad to just put right into there like that. And then we take our other one, we take the middle of the cravat configuration here, and we'd start by just wrapping it around like this. Then you can go over the top, like that. And then finish it off with a nice square knot on the top here. Or, or as I'm doing here, a bow version. Just a square knot. Yeah, does that feel pretty good? Yeah, it actually see you can kind of hold it, and kind of prevent. Yeah, you can bleeding. actually you can actually push on it with the, your own hand, right? And it won't slide off either. Yeah, and it, so it, it loops around your thumb. So that's how you would do a hand. So let me just show you that again. It's kind of a little bit. You want to basically cross over. So you want to start by just putting it into the hand. You actually put your own thumb on that to put pressure on there, and then as you wrap these, just put put pressure into that area. You can wrap it again. I think you guys get the idea that it's just, it's a very, uh, once you get the system of how it works, you can basically apply that configuration and that method to any part of the body. So another very important and special use of the triangular bandage um, that you're going to appreciate is splinting. So in this case, say we, had, we were out um, and a guy broke his leg, say it was broken here or it was broken in the thigh. Uh, one of the, if it's a really big break, especially up in the thigh, the femur bone, uh, a really good way to do this is to actually stick a, a blanket between the legs and then just tie the legs together. So in this case, we'd be looking at um, using at least three cravat configurations and putting them, you know, lift your legs up. I'd have somebody else, of course, do this part. We put a rolled up blanket in between the legs, running all the way and just tie them together really tight. Um, and in, with this actually method, it's really hard to cut off circulation because they're, the inside won't be as compressed as much as the outside. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to splint the bad broken leg against, against the good leg and prevent it from moving. Uh, and this just keeps everything stable, keeps, uh, if, especially if there's any really bad broken bones from cutting into the muscle or arteries. If it's an open break in the leg, meaning that uh, bone is sticking out through the skin. You don't want to do this. You want to just stabilize that the way it is. You don't want to move it or press it anyway. Just keep it stable uh, and take it really easy there. Don't want to, you know, put this over the top of that. Now the other option is uh, if it was maybe a smaller break or if it was an arm, you could actually splint it. So say we're outside here, we actually have an axe. Say we had, you know, a break here in the fibula or tibia and it was just really, really painful. We could actually splint it by just say putting this axe here on the side um, and you always want to splint with one above and one, one or two uh, cravats above and below the break. So in this case, we'd go below here and you can wrap it twice. Um, you can go actually this way and that way because an axe just seems to fit perfectly here. And then you could just tie that off with a square knot there. Just like that. That could feel pretty snug on there? Yep. Okay, so then we'd go, say the brake was here, we'd put one in here. And you can always wrap, because you're so long, you, you should wrap as many times as you can. So in this case, at least twice, just it, it spreads the area that's being pressed out a little bit more. And it gives you a little bit more ability to tighten it and keep it tight without having it slip. Uh, because of all the friction that's built up by multiple wrappings. So you tie that together and that will prevent that part of the bone from moving. 
You could also tie even higher up here above the knee or a little bit below the knee just to keep that stable. Does that feel pretty like stabilized? Yeah. Like it's kind of tied in. It's yeah. kind of like a cast. You could also put another, you know, you don't have to use an axe, of course. It could be a shovel. It could be a stick. You could just get a stick, um, a straight, nice, strong, dry stick, not flexible, and just tie it down, tie it up to the leg like that. Yeah, and you have a nice splint until you can get the person to a hospital or wherever to have it fixed up and put a cast cast on. So these uh, these work really well. Now I'm gonna mention that, you know, doing something like this with a rope is gonna be a lot more painful. Or if you're trying to create these in the field, it's actually a little bit difficult because, um, you know, you have to have a really long piece of fabric to do it with. And it's just not gonna work as well as if you have these nice, uh, triangular bandages in your first aid kit. So when you're folding, if you ever need to fold a triangular bandage back into a cravat configuration, you always start by folding it in half like this so that that, that tip of the triangle drops down to the base and then you fold it again in half like that and then you fold it in half again. So you never actually roll it up, you just want to fold it in half all the way and that way you can see it comes back together to a cravat really quick. And then you can always fold it back into a, just the trauma pad, but just again, you know, roll, folding it like that. There you have a tr nice, big, juicy trauma pad. Well, guys and gals, thank you for watching the video. I hope I was able to teach you at least a little bit today about using the triangular bandage. I hope you have one in your first aid kit, and I uh, hope, you know, you get to use it sometime. Just uh, like I said, Try this a little bit, maybe try it on one person at least at home, just so you know how it works. So that Because when a first aid situation comes up, especially if it's a lot of bad bleeding, you're gonna be a little bit panicked, have a little bit of an adrenaline rush if you haven't ever done this before. And having that skill in the back of your head and having practiced it at least once or twice, you'll at least kind of step in with a little bit more confidence and be able to do it right and do it well. Um, you know, these situations with uh, heavy bleeding and these types of things are can be pretty tense and people can go crazy and not know how to do things, you know, in, in, the, in the moment. So ask questions down below. And as always, praise God for everything he's given us and provided for us. This has been Eugene with Review Outdoor Gear, and I hope to see you in a future video. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, what?